The 2020 Tour de France may have been postponed from its original July start, but that doesn't mean you can't get your virtual racing fixed until late August. Tour de France 2020 is now available for purchase, but should you consider grabbing it, let's take a deeper dive into the game first. Tour de France 2020 includes several modes. In the race mode, gamers can participate in 21 stage Tour de France as well as other races through Europe. Many of the more popular races through Switzerland, France, and Belgium are all prominently featured in the game. Gamers can also create and control their own rider in the pro leader mode and race across Europe or manage their own cycling team in the pro team mode. Lastly, gamers can face their friends or others in a challenge mode head to head. The graphics for the game are, in a word, remarkable. First of all, let's start with the racetracks. The stages for each race feature the authentic landscape, something reminiscent of the Forza series. Considering that I'm someone who notices details like this, this is a welcome sight. Secondly, the title also features clean graphics and overlays that illustrate leaderboards as well as energy gauges and graphs depicting the height of the terrain during the matches. Not only are these graphics incredibly helpful, but they're also well placed and not in any way of the action. Now let's move into the most important part of any game, the gameplay. For the most part, the gameplay works as it should. And let me explain what I mean. In cycling, it's important to make sure that you, the racer, need to conserve as much energy as you can throughout the event. Sure, going as quickly as possible may put a racer in the lead during the early parts of the race, but eventually that will come back to bite him or her later on. Rather, it's important to find the balance between conserving energy and making timely attacks. That approach not only saves the racer energy, but it's also a smart strategy. Tour de France 2020 gameplay engine does a strong job of depicting this racing reality, as gamers must control their pace through effort control as well as follow other races in order to avoid exerting too much energy. Some other important features that are part of the gameplay engine include following other racers and the ability of using aerodynamics in your favor. Following other racers allows gamers not only avoid drafts but also be able to ride at the same pace as the one that is being followed. In addition, this feature also helps your racer conserve energy. This feature is great for new players who don't know all the ins and outs of cycling as well as experienced players who want to save some fuel. As for aerodynamics, racers can glide down steep inclines by using physics to your advantage. Just be mindful that if you do this, choose your spots as other riders will be more aggressive and attack down the inclines. All of these tools that I mentioned are very helpful as all the features I mentioned earlier help riders control their pace. Also the ability to regain injury through fuel packs, players can feel what it's like to actually be in an intense cycling race. All in all, Tour de France does a strong job with its gameplay engine to simulate a realistic cycling experience. It's not perfect, and we'll get to what can be improved in a bit, but it's quite good. Now what things can be improved in Tour de France 2020, it gets a lot right, but there's some things that can definitely be tweaked. For one, I found that the drafting system can be a bit inconsistent. When cycling in the game, you can see the white line that's on or around the arm of your rider. This line indicates whether your rider is dealing with the wind, which can affect how much the effort is being exerted. At time, I found that even when I was behind another rider, or even in a pack of riders, I could still see that white line. That seems to indicate that the drafting system could be tweaked up a bit. Second, team communication could also be improved. During a race, the cyclists can communicate with other members of the team. Gamers can instruct other teammates to attack, change their tempo, or wait for other racers. However, it can be a pain to do this, as once this is activated, the race stops before getting to the menu to talk to your fellow teammates. A change that could be beneficial is to change the controls so that communication could be easier rather than just stopping the race and then going through a clunky menu. In the end, if you're a hardcore cycling fan, there's a good chance you'll love this game. The game modes are rather simplistic, but the gameplay has the kind of realism that will appeal to the individuals who can't get enough of cycling. And if you're someone who's just interested in the sport, there's enough there for you to have a lot of fun with this game. Just be sure to get familiar with the controls because every aspect of the game is unique and it takes time to learn the proper way to cycle. Despite some flaws here and there, Tour de France 2020 is a quality cycling simulator and there's a lot here for both hardcore and casual cycling enthusiasts. We give it a 7 out of 10. If you enjoy our content here at SGO, like, subscribe for more news, reviews, and tips from your favorite sports games. Want to take your game to the next level? Join us on Patreon and become an SGO Insider today.